Hello, hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here by NXT Takeover London Review for tonight, Wednesday, December 16th, 2015. Of course, the final takeover of 2015. And the second takeover outside of Florida. And the first takeover outside of America. Of course, from Wembley Arena, aka the SSE, in London. When I heard that NXT was doing a takeover in London, I thought two things. One, that the crowd was going to be awesome, which they were, for the most part, yes. Not as trolly as the uh, Florida fans, but still pretty fun crowd you expect from European fans, specifically London fans. And two, was this going to air live at, eight at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in America? Or was it going to be tape delayed and air at 8 o'clock primetime American time like they do the walls when they're from London? Thankfully, it was live. At 3 o'clock, and a lot of people were working, but hey, that's what the network's for, people. Watch it live on the computer at work, or tablet at work, or watch it on demand later. So, with this being the last takeover of the year, after capping, capping off an amazing year for NXT as an overall brand, I thought the takeover was uh, pretty good. A pretty decent takeover is better than an average WWE pay per view any day. You know, it's still a fun takeover. Two matches were really good to me. The main event match and the first match were like the best match of the night. Give or take which one was better. And he towards the main event being the best match of the night. Uh, the, the second to fourth match were decent matches. Not as good as those two matches that I just mentioned. There was no surprises. Sami Zayn did not return. I'll spoil that now. Sami Zayn did not return tonight. He will return next week on NXT. I think it was kind of cool to have not Sami Zayn return because it would have overshadowed everything, but it would have got a bit pop for the crowd. But they taped another episode of NXT that will air next week from London as well. So they taped the NXT regular show one hour before the two hour plus NXT TakeOver uh, London. I thought respect was good. It's like, it's still fun takeover. Like I said, decent takeover is better than average every pay per view. Uh, Six point five, I'll give the rating out of ten. Like I said, it's coming the straight of two matches. If we had maybe one more good match in there, maybe I would have given a higher rating because I gave the last takeover respect seven point five, especially to help the heroes of an epic main event, which gave my first ever five winking ever. If anybody only want to we'll see if there was another five star match in the future, but. Still a pretty decent card tonight. So we kick things off. By the way, um, the pre-show on the network for the first time in a couple of pay-per-views, the pre-show didn't crash. Yay! The pre-show crashed during Survivor Series. The pre-show crashed during TLC. So guys, see, a, even though it was a half-hour pre-show, still we got to see a pay-per-view pre-show not crash. I call takeover pay-per-view. Cause you gotta pay for it. So I'll speed up the TLC aftermath. Triple H, if you guys ask it by Roman Reigns, the new WWE champion. I were comment about that near the end of the video because I didn't make a wall review on Monday like I was going to. I ran out to the club with my brother for a uh, ugly sweater party. Triple Reigns came out to start the show. He's like, I got my ass kicked from Reigns, but there was no way I was gonna miss NXT TakeOver in London. So big hoopla. Let's get on to the first match of the night, which, like I said, probably the second best match of the night next to the main event. And I think the best choice to open up the card, Oscar, the newest rising diva, women's wrestler in NXT, taking on Emma. Uh, way better than uh, Oscar's match against Dana, because Dana Brooke's kind of inexperienced. But uh, Emma's a more veteran. I think she could hold her own against Oscar more than Dana did. And that's what happened. This match got a very amount of time, great amount of time. More time than the average Divas match on the uh, main roster. Uh, really good match. Really aggressive match. Oscar looked awesome in this match. The crowd was on the side. And I've been seeing YouTube clips of the London fans and the European fans on this tour. From the you know fan shot clips. And they were like singing and and the wrestlers. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember all the chants. There was like a ton of them. Uh, they did like the... Oscar, 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 Oscar. And of course, a lot of, it felt like he said, because you heard a couple, fuck him up, blah, blah, fuck him up. Because you heard, fuck him up, Oscar, fuck him up. And there was like a million chants. <laughs> there was so many. So I'll probably 
I remember as many as I can for the Chiefs. There were some fun spots in this match. Uh, Asuka did the uh, funky weapon a couple times. I love when she did the funky weapon hip attack from the middle rope uh, to Dana on the floor. That was cool. I am now a fan of New Japan. Love New Japan. The guy from New Japan is actually commentating for SmackDown now. I think you should commentate NXT. <laughs> Moala Bennett should commentate NXT. Fuck commentating SmackDown. He should commentate NXT. Because it's got that indie vibe about it. You know, doing a hip attack from uh, Tom, Tom Gucci. But, uh, but there's some good spots to it. Like, Oscar with the big nasty. Oh, God, those kicks are vicious, man. And, and Emma held the whole too, man. You know, you got her big moves at my sandwich. She tried to go for the Emma lock. She did go for the dilemma. But it was kind of a back and forth match. Really good. Of course, Dana Brooke was a big sign. We may see a turn soon, but not tonight, though. Dana Brooke, at one point in the match, did get involved in the matchup, but didn't ruin it. Where got knocked out a little bit in the match. And Emma was put in the Oscar lock. And Dana Brooke threw something out of her belt or something and threw in the ring. And Emma threw it to Oscar. And Reffy got back up and Oscar was seen with the weapon. And Oscar's like, no, that's not me. You know, I thought, oh, man, we don't want to screw you, Andy. I've always part of NXT for any of the matches clean. And now I mean screwy finishes. Can you think of an NXT takeover with the exception of the Sami Zayn, uh, Kevin Owens matches that actually had a screwy ending? None. Besides those matches, every NXT match I remembered in TakeOver as ending clean. So after the referee avoided disqualifying Oscar after the uh, weapon was falsely accusing of Oscar using it. That's when the Oscar lock was put on Emma and referee was destroyed by Dana Brooke after the weapon used it. And she... Didn't, she made referee not see Emma tap out. Referee threw Dana Brooke out of the match. And that distraction gave Oscar enough time to recover from the referee not seeing Emma tap out. Big nasty kick. Knocked her ass out. One, two, three, victory for Oscar. Uh, 3.5 for this match. Like I said, the second best match of the night next to um, the uh, main event. Of course, we had two women's matches tonight. And this was the better of the women's matches tonight. Sorry, Bailey, you have to book with Nia Jax. I'll get to that match in a minute. Because this match was very fast paced, exciting, and good way to open up the show. You know, great way to get the crowd into it early. You know, great action for these women. And, and I love Emma as a heel. You know, she's really trying to embrace being evil now. You know, she was fun and bubbly, but I think as a heel, she it works, you know, as a heel. You know, she's getting better as a heel. Got some great heel moves there in the matchup. And she had a she had a good match too. Like I said, she had nothing to be ashamed of in this match. Even if she lost, she looked as good as Oscar did. That's what a great match does. Both people. Both people look good in the match. Like it's not just one person outshining the other. It's both people benefiting each other. And that's what Oscar and uh Emma did. Put on a great matchup, benefiting both of them. And we could see Oscar in a major feud coming up soon. Which I'll get to that in a second. Let's get on to the second match of the night. The NXT Tag Team Titles on the line. As Enzo and Big Cass. How you doing? Back in action after being attacked by the NXT Tag Team Champions. Dash Wilder and Scott Dawson. I'm starting to like these guys. You know, like every tag team NXT starts up as a little tag team. You don't think nothing will come from them. And then they build. They start. They slowly climb. That's what NXT does better in WWE. They do better storytelling and a more slow build for people instead of forcing them down your throat. Dash Dawson's got wild, you know, a small little team. And then they had their first big win over Cass and Enzo a couple months ago. And they've had a few since. You know, they've been battling back and forth. Enzo and Cass did beat them one time. But tonight, they were in a match again. This time, for the tag titles and coming off of the tag champions attacking Big Cass's leg. And London crowd is insane, of course. Big pop, big pop for Enzo and Cass tonight. And of course, the serenading continue with, uh, I love this one. Na, 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 big ass. And, uh, oh, Enzo Amore. Oh, Enzo Amore. Seven Nation over there. So, chance aside, the match itself was a fun tag team affair. 
Uh, Dawson Wilder, you know, being their first tag team defense on a takeover. We've seen what happens to a team doing their first defense. Blake and Murphy, when they defend the titles for the first time on a takeover back in February, botch heavy. Botch heavy against the Lucha Dragons. Not much this time. Uh, good matchup. They, uh, uh, they're, they're an old school team. You know, remind me of the Brain Buster. You know, just traditional, old school, rough and tumble tag team. And they had great double team work, really isolating Enzo in the corner for the majority of the matchup. Really taking a dance. I love Enzo's outfit tonight. It's a little get up with the suspenders with the England flag. <laughs> Only Enzo Muller can pull shit off like that, you know? No one else can dress like Enzo does. You know, that's why people love him. Like, his wrestler is not the best wrestler in the world, but his mic skills carry him. He has decent skills. Like he had a great DDT move he did. And of course, when Big Cass got in, when the referee did see an attack, because there was one time, I love the spot when, like, Enzo was going for Cass, but then as Enzo was going right for Cass, Dawson Wilder knocked him right out, right before he was, like, inches away from tagging him. And then, boom, once the tag was made, here comes Big Cass going in with the big moves. And I was like, he got that injured knee still, you know, storyline injured knee. And Enzo and Cass better know that Dawson Wilder is going to go for that. That's exactly what they did. They clipped the knee and really tore it up for the later half of this matchup. You know, really, really indeed, getting him in. And Enzo got his butt gripped. He got a nasty clothesline from Dawson Wilder. But then, uh, Cass and Enzo got back on their feet. Setting up for the big finish, the rocket launcher finish. Enzo had the pin. One, two, pulled out from Dawson. Pulling Enzo off of him, and Carmella got involved. Like, Dawson almost put his hands on Carmella. Carmella slapped him. But then, Enzo's going for a move. Big Cass was taken out after trying to save Carmella. After Carmella slept, Dawson. Double team finish from Dawson Wilder. I love it. They did that. Like, they tossed Enzo to the double team up the top. Well, that was a cool finish. One, two, three, victory for Dawson and Wilder retaining the Tag Team Championships. I'm, as you see from my gob, you know, my S and WFT soft and my How You Doing shirt. I'm a big fan of Enzo and Cass. They're my favorite tag team in NXT besides uh, the Volvillants and Gable and Jordan. I am disappointed we did not see Gable and Jordan in this takeover, but they will be on NXT last next week. They did announce a matchup, a Fatal 4-Way tag team match next week that was taped before the takeover in London with Gable and Jordan, the Hype Bros, Blake and Murphy, and the Volvillants. So... But I think the air was sucked out of the room because the fans were really pro Enzo and Cass. They really want Enzo and Cass to win. They've been very close to win the Tag Team Championships. But I knew, even though, like I said, I'm a big Enzo and, um, Enzo and uh, big Cass guy, I knew that Dawson and Wilder were going to be tanked because there was no way. They've only had a championship for like a month. So they're not going to lose the championships in a month, even with how over Enzo and uh, big Cass are. Uh, 2.7. A 2.8 for this match. Very fun matchup. Rezzy was decent. Of course, the crowd, a lot of chance during this match. Like, I can see why people may want to hate the crowd for kind of like distracting us for this matchup. But not, they're not as bad as Florida. It's London, you know. They get away with things. It's not London. You know, Florida fans just tour everything in NXT. Like, some people do hate the Florida crowd. But, but London crowd get a little sly because they're London. So, decent fun tag team affair. Even if Enzo and Cass got the loss. But uh I think it'll benefit him. Because he saw what happened like see what happened with Bailey. You know, Bailey had so many chances in the Divas Championship and she kept losing. But she finally won the Divas Championship. The women's championship. And we see if she does hold on when I get to her match with Nia Jax later. Next up after that match with the air kinda of something out. The fans were kinda of like fimbling as we got to Apollo Cruz and Baron Corbin. 
Unlike, uh, well, I'm a big Apollo guy. I'm a huge Apollo guy. He's like one of my new favorite guys. He's very agile and uh, very uh, strong. And Corbin, I think he's really basically being a heel better. And he's getting better. You know, wrestling with Wyatt on the tag team class that got him to learn a lot of stuff. And I watched Breaking Ground. If you haven't seen Breaking Ground yet on the network, watch it. It's a great show. See behind the scenes of NXT. But this match did not do these guys no favors. It was kind of a small match. Uh, there were some decent spots in there, you know, when, uh, I remember when, like, Apollo got tossed over the top rope and hit the steel steps really hard, and also there was a kind of a botch in there, like, like, Apollo was going for a move, and he kind of botched it, we heard Botchamania chance, and I love the crowd doing this one, though, because they were like, they, they said, fuck you, Corbin, I was like, wow, they all visited tonight, and I remember doing, uh, the Enzo, Amore, Big Cass, Dawson Wilder match, the famous movie. Who are ya? Who are ya? I love when he said like, "Are you Dawson? Are you Dash?" And then doing the Corbin match, they said, "We know who you are. You are shit." <laughs> yeah, that's British fans for you. But match itself was kind of slow going. You know, I thought it would be a fun match between these two guys who were agile, but it was just slow pacing. The pacing was just so slow. This match had the scene Enzo and Cass lose. You know. With the crowd being sucked out because they wanted Enzo and Cass to win. Because if they would have won, they would have popped big. But they lost. So, kind of sucked the air out of that. Well, one of the various spots besides Paul being tossed off was when uh, Corbin was going for the end of days. I don't know if like, like, Apollo would bust out of it. Like, got a great counter out of the move. And then, like, a big kick after that. And, of course, the big splash. And then kick out from Corbin. So, that's my other favorite spot in the match. I just think this match was more exciting, you know. And Corbin really looked good as a hero. He looked better as a wrestler. I'll say that much. He looked better as a wrestler tonight. He looked better getting great crowd reactions. You know, really basically being a heel. Especially when crowd's saying, fuck you. And Corbin sucks, as usual. You know, we always heard Corbin sucks. You know, Corbin sucks. I've spent that when I went to NXT in Cleveland back in June. Can't wait till they come to Detroit in January. I'm going to that for sure. Um, so, after the uh, attempt at the end of the days got thwarted by Mr. Cruz with the, you know, reversal out of it and doing a big kick and stuff. And then moves off. Cruz is going for a powerbomb finish. You know, his, pump, his little sit down powerbomb move. But then Corbin. Turned it right into the end of the days. One, two, three, victory for Baron Corbin. So there you go. Uh, 2.5. Uh, just because of the slow pacing. You know, I just I just thought the match was very slow pacing. It was, it was it was not fast at all. I thought it would be a lot more fast and a lot more exciting because I was looking forward to these two kind of brawling it off. But it was just okay. You know? And these guys are looking good and looking like they're going to get a title shot. But... If one of you guys get a title shot out of this, the performance wasn't as exciting as it could have been. So, uh, there you go with that. Um, Corbin won, like I said, 2.5. I think you give Andrew Cast 2.7. Now, on to our co main event. For the NXT Women's Championship, Bailey defending against Nia Jax. Uh, Nia Jax didn't deserve the co main. Bailey did. Bailey's had some great matches lately, but here's the thing. She's had great opponents to work off of. Two great matches with Sasha Banks, you know, working with Charlotte and Becky. But with them gone, they got to build up the women's division again and build new stars. She had an okay title defense against Alexa Bliss. And, of course, Eve Marie, God. She would have got eight alive if Eve Marie was in that. Probably she was taped for the NXT one-hour show, but she... If she is in the one hour NXT show next week, she will get fucking booed out the building. Like she would be in Detroit. <laughs> but Nia Jax is inexperienced, though. You know, you can kind of tell the inexperience of Nia Jax in this match. But she didn't look good in this match. It was kind of a beatdown match. That's why it's not as good as the other women's title matches in the past. Asuka Nevin was way more exciting than the, the women's title match. I'm sorry. It's not Bailey's fault. And Bailey had a great job, you know, coming overcoming the odds. You know, she was really isolated by Nia Jax, you know, really taking the tour with the nasty kicks and the powerful splashes. But it was kind of kind of one side for the most part of the matchup, despite Bailey's trying to fight back with, you know, trying to take her down a couple of times with drop kicks, 
she did have a guillotine choke at one time, going for it many times during the matchup, you know, trying to go for submissions. She had to go for a different game plan. You know, she can't power her and she can't do a fly moves. And there was no chance in hell barely delivering a belly to belly. A belly to belly to belly on nine and ten. There's no way. No way she was gonna do it. So she had to go for a different game plan. You know, going for the fast kicks, trying to wear her out, and of course the submission game. Which you don't see a lot from Bailey. It's kind of cool to see a kind of a different type of Bailey. But she had to do that because she had an inexperienced opponent. And an opponent that she couldn't do any big powerful moves with. You know, she couldn't match power to power against Nia Jax, which was like huge. And she did go for flying moves, and she got caught a couple times with Nia Jax. Nia Jax did okay in this matchup, you know, being her first takeover match, like first major match, and being flustered at the core main quickly. You know, she's only been the uh, NXT main television for about a couple months now. So to have her go up this fast is kind of interesting. And no, uh, I thought even we was going to join her, but she didn't. Maybe because she already wrestled, like I said, during the NXT one hour taping for the NXT that will air next week. So, so despite Nia Jax looking dominant, and she had another match, like I said, she looked decent. You know, she still got a long way to go, but she looked better than she has in other matches. You know, she's still diving in the ball, but at least she looked decent tonight. She looked like the monster that they should be. But Bailey had the numerous times of the guillotine choke and numerous submissions. She did get a guillotine choke. On Nia Jackson, the crowd really popped for that. The crowd was chanting for Bailey and doing that. Hey, Bailey, I wanna know, will you be my girl? That'd be better than, hey, we want some plus. I mean, Bailey. They did that one too. So she did, like, Bailey did get Nia Jackson to choke hold again. And got Nia to check, tap out as Bailey retained the NX2 Women's Championship. Um, I don't know how to wait this match because <laughs> I've always waited the women's matches so high in NXT, but because of the inexperience of Nia Jackson, barely having to work with the limited experience and limited mobility of Nia Jax, and limited movement, and she, she couldn't slam or anything. I'll give this match a uh, two point eight, just because I love Bailey and she needs better opponents. You know, I know she's got slim pickings right now because the NXT women's division is kind of like thinning out right now with a lot of the great, great ones going to the main roster. I think Emma could be a good feud for uh, Bailey. I think Emma could be better than fucking Eva Marie because Emma held the hold as I mentioned against Oscar. And now that we've seen Oscar feud with Emma apparently over and feud with Dana over, I think we're heading towards Nia Jax Oscar match because Oscar I Nia Jax backstage would made me think. We were going to see a title change tonight, but we didn't. Thank God. Because Nia Jax does not deserve NXT Championship after two months in the company. There are a few exceptions to that. There's only one person I know that is allowed to win a championship only two months in the company. Kevin Owens. Because he's Kevin fucking Owens, you know what I mean? He debuted in December and won the title in February. But Nia Jax does not deserve to win the championship two months after she debuted. She's still got a long way to go as I mentioned. But I think if she does feud with Asuka. It'll benefit both women. But at least Asuka's got more ammunition. She can kick the hell out of Nia Jax. And I think Asuka and uh, Bailey could be a better match. than like. Uh, that's what I think. Asuka should feud against Bailey. Asuka could turn heel. And take on Bailey. I would love to see that. Asuka against Emma. Uh, not As Asuka and Emma. Asuka and Bailey. For the NXT Championship. That match should happen. Sooner than later. I'd love to see that. <laughs> that would be really good. That could be the match that Oscar could win. If they want to send Bailey to main roster. And don't bury her like they did the other Divas. That's the thing. I love NXT. But they should stay. I think Finn Balor said in an interview. That he would never want to go to the main roster. He wants to stay in NXT. Especially seeing what they're doing to Neville. Doing to... Ascension, at least the Dragons are getting some momentum after that great showing from Kalisto with the Solita Del Sol at the top of TLC. But Bal's saying, hey, I don't want to get buried like all those guys. Stay in NXT for a while. And speaking of Ben Balor, let's get on to the match of the night, the main event for the NXT Championship. Small Joe against Finn Balor. This is how you do a proper booking for this. They were partners in the uh, Tag Team Classic. They won it. 
Joe wanted the shot. He got pushed back in the line. If he wasn't given the title match, he had to take it. He attacked Finn Balor. I love the build up to this with the contract signing with Doe Woods from Joe. He didn't even look at Finn in the contract signing. So I like the build up to the matchup. And then the match itself with Finn Balor once again pulling up another amazing entrance. Demon Balor again, but it was Demon Finn the Whipper. We are in London. We've seen uh, various intro with uh, Jack the Whipper references. You know, Sherlock Holmes. So, Balor came out with the trench coat and the hat. You know, Jack the Whipper. You know, Finn the Whipper. So, it's kind of a decent entrance. Again, you know, it's Finn Balor. Come on. The match itself. Really good. Really uh, very uh, high-paced. Very uh, exciting match. Got the crowd back in the game. Because the crowd, like I said, they were still chanting. But you can tell some air was sucked out after Enzo and Cass lost. Because they love Antoine and Cass. You know, they've been uh, uh, very long, one, two heroes winning in a row. At least it wasn't like TLC where you had like a bunch of heroes win. Only one good guy won. Well, two if you count Charlotte, but Charlotte may be turning heels soon, which I would love to see. So, the crowd got back into it after Bailey's match, but the crowd was really back in full strength during the Battle of Joe match. And it was an uh, exciting match that I thought. Really hard hitting, fast paced, really exciting matchup. Back and forth action for both these guys. Great spots. Finn Balor flying. Flying around. Big fly moves from him and some more Joe. It was just exciting. The crowd was like the most into it the entire evening since Enzo and Cass. You know, the energy was lifted back up with Battle and Joe. Of course, Joe many times went for the uh, choke, the key to clutch many times. He has made Finn Balor pass out to that numerous times in the span of their building up their feud. But then, of course, went multiple times for the uh, Muscle Buster as well. And there was some fun spots. I think, like, one time, I love when Balor got out of the Nikita Clutch, like, turned it into, like, a stomp and big Inzaguri kicks and stuff. He did, like, a Pele kick. He didn't get the full extent of the Pele kick, but he still got enough of it. Numerous times, trying for Kuda Guap. And crowd was, like, really popping during this match because it was just some very high place. Action with both guys. With that's why I love like that one spot when Joe had to locate the clutch and Balor rolled out of it and turned into a double stop. That was cool. Like I said, cool spot. There was so many cool spots with the high flying moves. You know, it was just it, the crowd was split. You know, you had Balor fans, you had Joe fans. You know, you had like you know, let's go, Finn and Joe's gonna kill you. You know, and it was just a very uh, very exciting match to cap up a decent fun night of NXT takeover. London. So after a very hard pace, very uh, grueling matchup for both guys, Balor did eventually get the victory. Duncan drove the top wall. I think Joe was going for a muscle muscle or a suplex, and Joe got knocked out. Balor went for the coup de grace. What you see victory for Finn Balor? Of course, he set up with some drop kicks and of course the splash in the corner, leading up to knocking Joe off as Joe was going for a big move, setting up the coup de grace, and of course Finn Balor retains. The NXT Championship. Uh, 4.0. I think it's the best match of the night for sure. And it's kind of interesting. The men have taken the show back. You know, Oscar and Emma kind of stole the show tonight. Because they had a great opening matchup. But Balan Joe's... This is probably the first takeover in a while. That the men's match was the best match of the night. You know, because here's the thing. The women's division in NXT is still highly regarded as a great division. Thinning, you know, you gotta get your new, you, you got a lot of new talent coming in, trying to find their place, find their character. So, there's not a lot of people right now that can step up to the game besides Oscar right now. Oscar's like my favorite right now. So, I think Oscar can step up a game and has stepped it up with a great match against Emma, probably heading towards the Nia Jax feud. So, uh, there I go with that 6.5 for NXT to go over London. I shall end this video with my thoughts on Roman Reigns winning the uh, WWE Championship because I did not make a wall review on Monday because I was at the club and it was kind of a rough wall to miss because it was kind of like the best best wall of the year. Vince came back. Vince was like, oh, if no one else can save the ratings, I may have to. And Reigns won the titles we know in the stipulation against Sheamus and I watched it and that was the best way to book Reigns. It didn't felt forced. It felt more natural. The fans were genuinely wanting Reigns to win the match. You know, it didn't feel 
for, it was natural, you know, with the vents interfering, overcoming the odds, you know, you, you heard when he won, you had a better reaction than when he did in Survivor Series. In Survivor Series, it felt forced and predictable, because he's like, oh man, we knew Reigns was going to win this tournament. It felt forced. It felt hand fed. But when Reigns won Monday, it did not feel forced. It felt natural. It felt genuine. And the perfect redemption for Reigns. Because he won the title and got cheered. At the same place he got booed 11 months before when he won the Royal Rumble. Because that was forced and predictable. This wasn't forced. It was natural. And genuine. The fans genuinely wanted Reigns to win. They put him in a position that made fans want to join Reigns' fight. Not forcing them to join him. Giving him genuine emotions to make him. Especially if he beat up Triple H Sunday, so it felt more natural. In genuine. So that's my little blip about Reigns winning. And it was a fun war as well, Monday. With a great tag. I love that extreme tag team match between the Dudleys and the Wyatts. Wyatts looking good, man. They're getting over. So we'll see what's next for the Wyatts. So they were a little blips on the wall with, of course, the NXT took over London Review. 6.5, like I said, not. Like, like I said, not the greatest takeover ever. Because the card, like, there was only two matches that were really good. Out of the, but it was still, like I said in the beginning, a decent takeover. Better than an average WWE pay-per-view any day. And of course, anything from NXT is better than TNA. <laughs> Ring of Honor is close. Because I love Ring of Honor too. Um, of course, NXT is going on a uh, Midwestern tour. Now I'm going to NXT in uh, Detroit. Tickets going until this week for Royal Oak. I went to see him in Cleveland. And I want to see him so bad again. And I want to leave Michigan. And it's at the Royal Oak. And I set up my review. I made a review of the uh, Cleveland show when I went to NXT there. It's on this channel. That I compared the Angola to the Royal Oak Music Theater. Because that same kind of vibe. I don't know if I can inspire WWE or not. But they did chills the Royal Oak Music Theater. For the uh, NXT show in Detroit. Maybe I had something to do with it. Maybe someone... From there, we watched my video and said, hey, someone said, you're going by the Royal Oak. Let's go to Royal Oak when we come to Detroit. <laughs> but hey, we'll see. But hey, can't wait to see NXT in Detroit next month. So there you go. NXT TakeOver Review. Last one of the year for TakeOver. Thank you very much for watching. With that in mind, you've been attacked by the review from Zach. See ya. Yeah.